what if I took the stuff that I hate working with, the stuff that is just really just gumming up the works around here that I don't even want these bottles, and I said, what can we do with it? Can we make something good with it? What good can we do with these things? So I grabbed three bottles that I'm calling today the worst bottles in my bar. Um, and I'm going to see, I'm, I'm gonna find out, I'm gonna, I don't have a plan, I'm gonna try to make a drink with them. I'm gonna try to make a drink with it. This is the worst bottles in my bar. I honestly, I think this could be a series. I think this could be a whole thing. And if you want more of this, let me know in the pinned comment and we will definitely do Malort in uh, part two of this, if we do a part two. Malort will be headlining that lineup. In our lineup here, we've got Gowling Liquor, Screwball Peanut Butter Whiskey, and Parrot Bay Pineapple. If you recall from the uh, uh, Customer's Always Wrong part one, this one was a real doozy. Comes in a beautiful plastic jug. I think we should start with uh, one of these three bottles and I'll do a tasting of it and explain to you why this is hell and then I'll see what I can do as far as a drink. So let's start out with actually something that I think a lot of you are probably quite fond of. Screwball, peanut butter, whiskey. I don't know what the legality is of that. I don't know why they can call it whiskey because it's a liqueur. Nothing against Screwball, the people, but no, that's not, I don't, I mean, it, maybe it started out as whiskey and that allows them to say that it's whiskey, but whatever. It's a, it's a liqueur. It's a, it's a highly sweetened peanut butter liqueur. Um, it's so sweet, in fact, that I just had to, the, the cap was quite, you know, sealed up there from the sugar. Um, 750, 70 proof, so it's 35% alcohol, a little bit below, you know, it would have to be at least 80 proof, it would have to be 40% to be whiskey for sure, and that has nothing to do with how it's made. So I'm just going to pour a little taste here. This is not actually unpleasant to drink. It's not bad in that way. It's bad in like the, there's very little you can do with this. And so the question will be, what can we do with it? So here's a uh, example of what screwball peanut butter liqueur. I mean, it's bad to drink in the fact that it is sugar syrup. There's a place and a time for that. It's just not something you want to have all the time. It tastes like peanut butter. I mean, that just tastes like peanut butter. It's just like straight, fiery, hot, alcoholic peanut butter. What this tastes like, and it's almost there already because of how sweet it is, is really this tastes more like a, a Reese's. It doesn't taste like peanut butter. It tastes like a peanut butter candy, right? And that's where this goes. Like, if you think about what actually peanut butter tastes like, it doesn't really taste like that. This tastes like the peanut butter inside of a Reese's chocolate cup. And so I think that the automatic default thing to do with this is to make some kind of a Reese's peanut butter cup or Reese's pieces cocktail, right? So you get some of this and some chocolate liqueur and that's like 80% of your drink. You don't need to go uh, anywhere else than that. But I'm wondering if there's something better we can do with it. So we've got a lot of sweet and we've got a lot of flavor here. And really this is, this has to be a modifier. So I, I'm, I'm not sure where I'm going with this yet. I do think that it can be something whiskey-ish can be done here. I'm sure of that. And look, if you really wanted to, and I'll show you really quickly how to do this. Like if you just want to make like peanut butter cup shop or something like that, right? You just probably do, and I'm guessing, half an ounce of chocolate liqueur, one part peanut butter whiskey. And you know, we'll do like the exact same equal part, right? Just a little splash of bourbon in there. So it's not pure syrup. Not the kind of thing, it doesn't really need to be shook, but that's okay. We are just kind of developing recipes here. When I'm doing that, I will work very fast. A lot of times I do all kinds of things where I just like have cold water and I use spoonfuls of cold water and stuff. Today I'm not doing that. If we decide that this drink should actually be stirred for textural reasons, then that's fine. We're just working out the formulation here. Anyway, this might be a kind of a chocolate peanut butter cup drink. That's not bad. That is like a, a peanut butter, chocolate peanut butter cup. Just enough bourbon in there to taste like a cocktail. All right, I'll try that again, different way. Stirred. All right, we'll do it as a stirred drink. In this case, again, one ounce of the peanut butter whiskey. I just wanna know if you can do anything other than make a peanut butter cup shot with this, you know? Half an ounce of the Tempest Fugit. We'll do an ounce and a half of our bourbon again. All right, and uh, crack some ice in there. I like the clarity, that's fun. Let's see if this is any good. Oh yeah, that's very nice. So that is pretty cool. That is managing to showcase your bourbon with this super elevated peanut butter note running through it that does not demolish the taste of the bourbon. The creme de cacao does kind of disappear in there, but it is, you get it. It's in there, it is working to kind of unify and meld round out those at flavors. It also is providing a lot of the sweetness because although this is pretty sweet, 
This is a lot more sweet. This brings it, I mean, I think you could almost do that. I'm curious about throwing two dashes of bitters in there. Let me taste it again and see if it really needs it. You know what else I think would be really good in here is um, allspice dram. But I think that a couple dashes of Angostura will be fine. I think that some of the spices there in the Angostura are going to help really kind of accentuate some of the flavors that we're on the cusp of tasting here. I like it a lot, but I gotta say, it takes over the drink. I would do one dash or none, because once that's in there, it, it the peanut butter aspect of it gets kind of buried. It is delicious, but the peanut butter does hide it a lot. It is, it's sweet. It's not overly sweet, but it's at the sweeter end of the acceptable, acceptable spectrum. It's not completely hiding your bourbon. At least the old granddad, the peanutty notes of there, and which are different from peanut butter, I should point out, or the way that peanut butter expresses in screwball. After effects of sweet peanut butter candy. I am definitely getting that on the back end of that. And the bitters are present with allspice, cinnamon, that kind of thing happening here. Um, the, actually, the, the more bitter elements of Angostura bitters, which is funny, I don't actually think of Angostura as being terribly bitter, typically are coming to the fore here. So the whatever is the actual bittering agent in there, probably gentian or something like that, you're actually kind of getting a little bit of that, um, which is unusual uh, for me with the use of Angostura bitters. For a garnish, I wouldn't want a twist or a cherry. I would just put a Reese's peanut butter cup on a stick. I don't have any right now, but like, especially if you can get a mini one with dark chocolate or something, it'd be perfect. So, I mean, there's a cool cocktail. What do we call it though? We haven't named it yet. This is the, um, let's call this drink Willy Wonka's Retreat. And after this, uh, from Willy Wonka's retreat, we're gonna head over to the Pirate Bay right after this. Thanks, Greg, I'll take it from here. You know, something that's really important to me is sleep. I just can't get enough of the stuff. I mean, literally, I never seem to get enough sleep. I'm betting you're in a similar situation and I've got some tips. First off, the ultimate sleep aid tool is a mattress. I've tried the alternatives and while they have their merits, a mattress is generally better. If you don't have a mattress or you're not enjoying the one you've got, Helix Sleep has got you covered. Lucky thing for me, they also happen to be the sponsor of this episode, so thanks, Helix. See, Helix knows that no two sleepers are the same. That's why they've made the Sleep Quiz, which matches your unique body type and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress for you. Through the quiz, they determined that I'm a back and side sleeper who prefers a medium to firm mattress. Their questions didn't cover that I'm a sleep-avoiding late-night rage tweeter and doom scroller, but that's probably not a problem a mattress could solve for me anyway. Anyhow, they paired me up with a Midnight Lux, and I've got to say, this is a mattress I can definitely sleep on when I manage to put down my phone or get away from my computer, that is. I've had it about a year now, and I think it's definitely more comfortable than the mattress I was sleeping on before. Um, and I like the level of firmness that it provides, I really do. You know, my wife likes it too. We took the sleep quiz together, and they do take that into account, you know, if you co-bed, whatever the term is for that. And that quiz and website are super easy to navigate. I love that. Since buying a mattress online uh, that you can't try out in a store can seem a bit risky, Helix gives you a 100-night sleep trial. That's about three months to decide if you like the mattress risk-free. And if you don't, they're going to come and take it away. They've also got a 10-year warranty, which is awesome for me because I've got this uh, sleep plan that I'm going to stick with for at least another 10 years. I'm going to stick with sleep. I'm going to keep trying that. Helix delivers straight to your front door for free anywhere within the US. Comes rolled up in a box and it's real easy to get set up. You just open the box, pop the mattress out, let it breathe, it'll puff right up for you. Actually, all you've really got to do is click the link below or go to helixsleep.com slash HTD. You'll get up to $200 off your mattress plus two free pillows. And they're pretty nice pillows. All right, I am going to try to catch up on that sleep that I'm missing. And for you, back to the show. Just, just a couple more minutes. Just a couple more minutes. Oh, the new Wordle posted. Neat. All right, we're back with the next worst bottle in my bar. It's Parrot Bay Pineapple Rum. This is, it tells you exactly what it is. It's Caribbean rum with natural pineapple flavor produced by Parrot Bay. This is a 1.75 liter and it's 42 proof. Great. Wait, what? Wow. It's really low ABV. This is like not rum. It is something that may have begun its life as rum, but it is not rum. Let's just have a taster from the deep, from the abyss, straight from the lips of hell. I forgot how putrescent this smells. It smells rotten. It smells like rotten pineapples, not pineapples. Mm, this might be difficult. This might be more difficult than I imagined. 
I don't like that. That tastes like some kind of artificial pineapple syrup. It is very sweet pineapple, but like robotic pineapple, like pineapple made by paint by numbers pineapple, machinery, machinery pineapple. It has like a, yeah, you know what that smell is? It smells like the laundry that was wet that you didn't wash when you should have washed it, but now it's got that laundry mildew smell. It's got laundry mildew smell. It smells like my grandma's basement. There's like a real, like it attacks your tongue. It has a real tangeriness to it. A mighty tang. Tang, tang, tastic. Tangaroonie. I don't like it. What will I make with it? I don't think this is going to be a sophisticated drink, but I'd like to make it a passable beach drink. I just don't think it can be. I don't think it should be. I don't think you should take that and stir it and put it into a, a stemware. I think that's weird. I don't have a plan. I don't even know where I'm going from one ingredient to the next right now, but I have a funny feeling I think we'll make, be all right. So I'm going to start with lime, one ounce of lime, an ounce of the parpe. I'm going to go an ounce and a half on my El Dorado. I might even wind up a little more El Dorado than that before we're all said and done, but let's go there for now. We got some sweetener in here. I like the orgeat. That's a little over a half an ounce. I don't usually reach for grenadine, but I happen to have some fresh grenadine and I think it's gonna, I think it's gonna be nice in here. So we're gonna do a quarter ounce of grenadine. Small pour, in other words, just a scant amount. Mostly for color. I'm gonna do one ounce of pineapple juice. I told you I might step it up with our El Dorado. I'm going to. We had one and a half in there before. I am going to put in another ounce, making this two and a half ounces of El Dorado. Let me see. Do I have a drink here? I hope. All right, now I'm gonna shake that with some crushed or cracked ice. I'm gonna open pour that into this uh, little kind of hurricane glass thing. Go with an orange slice. All right, I don't know what it is yet, but let's find out. Let me need a straw. Let's see what we got here. That's delicious. That's, um, shit, man, that's actually great. That's a very well-balanced kind of um, riff on a pina colada, actually. There's no coconut in there, obviously. We never added any coconut, but uh, there's something happening in here. The lime, pineapple juice, and the pineapple rum, they kind of dance on the taste buds on the sides of your mouth, which is a thing I love when a drink does that with the almond. Yeah, that's what it is. It's the almond. It's the almond is kind of fulfilling the role that coconut cream often does in a pina colada. And it's sort of like a sideways almondy pina colada. Surprisingly good. Stupid easy to drink. You, you, they serve you those on the beach. You're going to drink three in an hour and be very asleep, very fast. It is light, not domineering, not overpowering. None of the weird ass flavors of this, the weird mildew laundry basement nightmare flavors that are here, they're gone. We kind of stripped them out with acids, you know, we kind of covered them up with some lime and then we back sweetened, right? So that is a, that's not a bad drink. <laughs> that's pretty good. I'm happy with the way that came out. I think that, yeah, that's good. Uh, my only thought is that maybe more grenadine. The grenadine doesn't do much other than add a color here. Yeah, probably not. But I, I kind of wish it was like a different color than this like off peach thing. It's just a weirdish like flesh tone or something. I don't know what else to call it, but it's tasty. After this, we got to do, I don't know what you want to call this, but this is just absolute pure hellfire demon juice straight from the pits of the abyss. I'm back with uh, Kinmen Kowling Liquor which is 58% alcohol, 82% sorghum, and 18% wheat. I, I always avoid drinking this, and so I'm gonna have a little taste of it here. It is an intense flavor, if memory serves, and it just, dude, it just smells like a soaking wet dog at my grandparents' house. A soaking wet dog standing next to one of my grandfather's kerosene space heaters. And when I say soaking wet dog, I mean truly an unkempt, English sheepdog of which they had between four and six at various times and a kerosene space heater. This is my grandfather's garage and I have to drink it. Oh Lord. Mm. Oh Jesus. Yeah. Oh man, there it is. It's if you don't put air to it while you swallow, you can like, yeah, I can squeeze that down my throat. Sure. And then you have to breathe at some point and now you just keep breathing and it's just like, yep, no, fuck you. It's like eating mothballs. That is what it's like. It's like eating mothballs. It continues to be the worst substance 
known to man for ingestion. I can't conceive of a worse thing to eat or drink. So my thoughts are that we have just the loudest, most obnoxious flavors known to man right here. And that we need to, to beat the shit out of it. How do we honor it? What part of that do we want to still taste when this is all said and done? I don't know. I think we're going to want to water it down a lot. I'm going to uh, start this up with an ounce of lemon juice. I honestly, I may fail here. I'm, I'm giving myself, I am giving myself permission to fail because I, I genuinely don't know if you can do anything good with this, but I think making some kind of a sour from it is our surest shot at success. Now I want um, a half an ounce of simple syrup. That is basically the basis for our sour. I'm gonna do a half an ounce of Midori. I am gonna do an ounce and a half of this nightmare juice. I feel like that's our base spirit. If I don't use it, I'm not really doing the job here. I am gonna put in four dashes of Angostura bitters. Why four? I don't know. There's something about the smell of that when I put it all into my memory there and I smelled them all together, told me like that's a good place to be. Yeah. Starting to smell chocolatey, which is interesting. That's what I'm trying to do. I am trying to bend this thing's flavor towards whatever parts of it could be considered desirable. And yeah, actually, when you think about it, although it is nothing like chocolate, it's like if you were to pitch shift it into that, you could key shift it into chocolate. I don't know. That's what I'm telling myself. Uh, I'm gonna do an egg white. Let's dry shake that. It smells pretty noxious. I don't think really? Gonna, yeah, I don't think this is gonna work. <laughs> I have one more approach on this thing. If this doesn't work, I want to try one more thing. All right, I don't think this is any good, but we'll find out right now. Jesus. Oh boy. A wet dog nose. It's better. It's weird. It's really, 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 really weird. I mean, here's the thing about that. If you can convince people that Fernet is good, I have a funny feeling you could convince people that this is good. I love it. But it's not, it's very intense. It has a very intense flavor profile. I mean, we've taken the really intense chemical parts of this and brought the volume way down and lengthened it out so that it's way less sock you in the face. But boy, howdy, is it still there. In addition to that, it's a, it's a fairly well-balanced sour. It's got a sweet component, it's got a sour component, the Midori is in there. I don't know if I'm tasting Midori. Woo! Out put some hair on your chest. It is just... <laughs> and speaking of hair, it does kind of taste like it might be a hair tonic. I mean, it is, it's intense. But yeah, I think we can, I'm gonna try this one more time. I, I didn't think I was gonna have to try this one more time, but I'm close to something. I wanna try just throwing kind of bigger artillery at this stuff to see if I can really match its intensity and then take it someplace, okay? So after this, we're gonna try this one more time, see if we can come up with something for, that really works for this, uh, this stuff. Cause this is like, it suggests that it's possible. It's just not quite there yet, right after this. All right, I'm back. I have one more thing I want to try with this. I, I gotta tell you, I think my, my chances here for success are pretty low. I'm not gonna lie, yeah, it's just not great. I'm gonna modify an industry sour. That is a drink that is um, a chartreuse and fernet branca sour. Um, I brought, I have all those ingredients on set. I'm not sure if I'm subbing in this for one of the ingredients in an industry sour, or if I'm adding it to an industry sour as a fourth ingredient. I haven't decided yet. We need one ounce of lime juice. Now let's bring in our actual bottles here. We got the Fernet, the Kaling, and the Chartreuse. Yes, I actually do think, I think that with all four of these working together, we may have a drink here. I think we're gonna do it in a half ounce. Now that's not a huge pour of Kaling, but it is like in proportion to the rest of the drink, so. It's the right amount. Like I'm not, I'm not cheating it down. In other words, half an ounce of Fernet Branca, half an ounce of Angostura bitters, half an ounce of Chartreuse. All right, let's get some ice in here. If this works, we have to give it a ridiculous name. But all right, here we go. Well, I'll tell you what. I don't smell wet dog. Wow. 
Hold on a sec. Yeah, I'm gonna throw in um, half an ounce or a little more than a half an ounce of Bourgeau. I'm gonna reshake this. A lot of ingredients, I know, but I gotta say that didn't, I wasn't immediately like, this is garbage. All right, let's try that one more time. Here we go. <laughs> I like it. I like it. It's insane. Wow. Oh my God, I can't believe we made a drink work with that shit. I'm sorry. <laughs> So I guess the thing is, when you've got a, you got to find a way to put Gatling wine into a drink or something like this, with this kind of intensity, the only thing you can do, match it. You got to come guns blazing with the most intense flavors you can find. And the only thing that comes close is for Nebranca. You need the lime there for balance. It works. Here we go. This is the gamut. Intense herbal bitterness married to sweetness. Um, that resolves into that Fernet Branca dry, rooty, just like earthy, argh, bitter. It turns around into the sweetened, lengthened, and lightened version of the wet dog that we got here. But somehow now it's like when you contrast it to what Fernet Branca brings, okay, that is like, oh, whoa, where are we going? There's like a whole other dimension of insane bitter flavors it pulls you in this other direction if you don't like bitter things and i mean like bile bitter or just shy of bile bitter then you're not gonna like it if the jungle bird is your speed if uh, trinidad sour is your speed if you are prone to enjoying the occasional negroni this might be on your radar and it leaves a lingering note in your mouth that you'll catch here and there on a breath or a word or on a swallow instead of being overpowering it's intriguing it tastes like a cuisine that you are not necessarily familiar to it doesn't taste like an assault on your mouth or anything like that it's like oh whoa hey what's going on there i've never had anything even remotely in that space and like it's inviting you like this is a place from far away I, you know like it's just not familiar to my palate but in a way that's still somewhat accessible I want to say too, I just stumbled onto this note. It, it's got a lot of clove to it. There's a lot of clove in this flavor profile when it's all said and done. I'm getting cloves and incense. It is weird. It's a weird drink. What do I call this sucker? I got to call this a four corner sour because the ingredients come from every, uh, the Caribbean, uh, South America, Taiwan, um, and limes, which, you know, you grow elsewhere. I mean, yeah, I feel like I got to call an almonds, which come from North America, I think primarily, right? Or the dark corners of the earth. Maybe that's what we call it. Kind of reference that, uh, that video game that I liked. That was a cool game. I liked that it was a first person shooter where you didn't have a gun and you just ran away from people shooting at you. That was pretty cool. Yeah, man. Very happy with myself here. I genuinely, <laughs> I mean, I'm not happy with myself. I'm genuinely surprised because i really truly thought we were going to fail and uh i i i can't believe it i can't believe we found a way to put that thing into a cocktail all right well that is the worst bottles of my bar this week we looked at screwball peanut butter whiskey we looked at parrot bay pineapple rum and uh we got our Kaoling liquor 58 proof 58 percent sorry made a uh, willy wonka's retreat a um We'll call that a Pirate's Perch. And um, a four, a Dark Corners. Dark Corners. I like that. We'll call that the Dark Corners of the Earth. Uh, it definitely seems abyssal. And yes, I mean abyssal. I don't mean abysmal. People have corrected me like, you mean abysmal? No, I mean abyssal. I know what I'm about. I'm talking about the fucking infernal powers of the nine hells. Uh, yeah, so we made something with Screwball Peanut Butter Whiskey, which honestly isn't bad in the way that this is bad this is like miserable to drink this is very much too sweet and difficult to mix um and then this which tastes like uh you know rotting cabbage and dirty laundry uh, or smells like it at the very least so it's difficult to kind of balance those flavors i don't know thought this was a fun idea for an episode i kind of hope you want to do more of it because it was fun to make uh let me know in the comments and uh, I'll see you guys very soon in another episode. Uh, in the meantime, if you want to like, comment, and subscribe, why would you do that? 
why would you do what I tell you to do? Be your own person. You could do whatever you like, you know, be the master of your domain. Uh, you don't need to take that shit from me, but it would be lovely of you to watch more of how to drink, which I've been making for six years and uh, I'm, uh, I'm stuck in it. I'm stuck here making this show. So you may as well watch it. Thanks. Oh yeah, and I got social media stuff down there. All right, thank you guys so much. See you soon with another episode of How to Drink. Let me know if you like this. Bye.